Hey gang, it's Wes, and we're here for another software showdown. And as you can see by my Apple Pencil and <gasps> iPad, that's right, um, we're looking at two mobile apps. We're going to be taking a look at Art Studio Pro and Infinite Painter. So I've used Infinite Painter before. I actually have a video about how much I enjoyed it. But the thing is, I don't paint a whole lot on mobile ever. I have a three monitor setup. Um, and whenever I'm working with clients or, you know, big project stuff or even personal stuff, I primarily work in this setup that we've seen time and time again on the channel. So with this, what I wanted to do is actually do some quick one hour still life studies because, you know, as the old saying in art school goes, if you can paint an apple, you can paint anything. And I actually tend to agree with that. But really what we're wanting to do is I am making the leap to start doing more traditional stuff. So this is a canvas panel and I already have the sketch uh, of this. I have yet to decide exactly what colors to use and stuff like that. So I thought what better way than do some preliminary test runs with these mobile apps, one to put the apps through their paces, but then start to make decisions and have the experience of doing the same painting multiple times so I can work more confidently with the oils or acrylics or whatever. I haven't even chosen what medium I'm going to So I just sketched it out and <laughs> sprayed it down. But yeah, we're going to just take a general overview look at these two behemoths that are, you know, not appropriate. So without further ado, let's get to it. So first off, we're going to look at Art Studio Pro. Now, to be completely fair, this is the longest time I've ever spent with it, <laughs> is what you're seeing right here. So this took about 54 minutes. I wanted to keep both of these under an hour just to, you know, be able to get this video out and about to the world as quickly as possible, but also have a little bit of time to really start messing with the features of it. Now, Something you're going to notice is I, I work the same way no matter what program I use. So really, whenever I start using a program, I it, it's almost weird to do these type of videos because I don't feel like I'm necessarily reviewing the program because all of these, I barely use any of the features. You know, what you're going to see me use is layers. Um, I changed blending modes on layers. I basically start with an underpainting, or really I start with a sketch. And I will say, just on this part, the art pencil that got, just comes with Art Studio feels great. Like, this is a really good pencil. I don't like sketching, you all know me. Sketching's not my thing. But I felt really kind of into it after a few minutes of just messing with this and trying to get the, the feel right. I noticed that it really worked well with the tilt functionality of the Apple Pencil. So as you all know, I primarily, I have a big desktop with three monitors and you know, I have a Huion canvas touch monitor and all this stuff. So the Apple Pencil and the way it feels, I'm still not completely used to yet. But having the flexibility and the, the fun of using it in art studio it just felt really nice like it feels like less of a learning curve because of how natural some of the tilt stuff works uh you know other programs not going to name names um say they have really good tilt functionality but i can never quite get it to work naturally like i can make it work but you know the more i'm thinking about what tool do I have to use or what you know size brush or what blending mode or like all that type of stuff that's less time I'm kind of getting in that flow state of just painting so whenever we're looking at both of these I wanted to get to you know I wanted to see could I hit that flow state could I get to a, a spot to where I just was enjoying working on the iPad um, and you know with the sketch part of this absolutely and spoiler alert with the rest of it absolutely as well and yeah, there, there's just a lot going on with this. So I wanted to work purely in color. I didn't want to do the old thing of, 
you know, work in value, work in grayscale, and then, you know, maybe color overlay or, you know, overlay or multiply or whatever to try to like put colors in and make them make sense. I wanted to see how well uh, both of these kind of blended out and mix those pixels together and what kind of feel does it have? And Art Studio feels really smooth when it comes to that. I did kind of, I guess, a burnt or burnt sienna underpainting, I guess, uh, some sort of, you know, raw burnt sienna look. Very orangey, very warm, because the stock photo, as we saw in the intro, is pretty cool, actually. The background's cool. So what I like to do is I like to, if, if a majority of the color tone and color temperature of a piece of, that I'm studying is, let's say, cool, I usually underpaint with a warm. And that's gonna let some of that cool really pop. And you'll see that whenever we start adding the blues, or I should kind of say more of the grays near the right side of the piece, it really starts popping out and gets that really nice look that I love in like traditional oil painting and stuff like that to where you get these almost vibrations of color because you have a nice warm, kind of a darker warm mixing with a darker cool and it just, it's a really neat effect. I really like it. Um, a lot of the masters did it. Rembrandt, uh, Cezanne, like um, Caravaggio. There's a lot of people that, if they play with light a lot, you'll actually see a lot of that vibrating color in the light. But anyway, back to the actual usage of, uh, of Art Studio. Yeah, it didn't get in my way. There was one thing that, uh, and it may even go by so fast in this time lapse that you can't really tell, but like, I guess I had clicked on a button and it wasn't allowing me to like slide a slider because it was putting in the hex code value. So that was my mistake, but I'm a big doofus. So I'm, you know, I'm an old dude messing with quote unquote new technology. I'm, I'm not used to these dang fangled iPads with their <laughs> pencils and uh, really, really, I mean, you know, it's an intimidating thing because it does feel way different. Mobile art and doing art on a tablet or maybe even like on a phone um, just feels different. It feels more like just drawing in a sketchbook, which is cool. And I appreciate that about it. But it is way different than sitting down at a three monitor setup and like kind of having your exact brushes that you know all the tools are on the right hotkeys and stuff there's big learning curves when it comes to this uh, tablet stuff so that that was really the intent on this was to see how well could I like fall into the groove could I let it kind of melt away could I let the UI sort of melt away and just worry about painting and yeah it, it was easy to pick my brushes it was easy I think the categories that they have brushes in in art studio makes sense because you have something um, that's called pigment, which is their kind of real blend mode. You also have like pigment blending and rebel. And uh, I know Art Rage has kind of their nat uh, excuse me, natural brush engine type stuff. So there, a lot of companies are doing that now. So all of the brushes in Art Studio under the pigment category have pigment mode turned on by default. I think you can go into the layer options and activate it no matter what layer or what brushes you're using, but it's nice to know that you can just go into a certain subcategory of the brushes, pick pigment, and you'll get what you're expecting, you know? And yeah, I, I really didn't run into any usability issues with this. Um, I will say Procreate has sort of I don't know if they've done it first but I think they are the probably the most used widely used mobile app for art so a lot of these hotkeys work the same way so you know uh, pinching the screen and like zooming and all that stuff I think I did try to do the two finger undo and it didn't work um, it might be three fingers on art studio I don't know so if you're coming from one mobile art thing and trying another one make sure that you set up hotkeys to make sense for you or like touch gesture stuff to make sense it's just going to make the learning curve a lot easier for you but the nice thing is i'm not good at any of these <laughs> so it's all kind of new to me it's all learning you know uh but no nothing really got in the way here i i really did 
once I started mixing and max, uh, matching brushes and going for a mix of like painterly and then going for the more, it sounds weird, a traditional digital brush. So something like a hard round, something that you're used to on a Photoshop or, you know, Clip Studio or whatever. Uh, going from that to the more painterly and pigment brushes, it felt really nice. I will say there is another little bit of a learning curve as far as the brush slider really corresponding and I mean it is what you see is what you get like if you slide it and it says it's 40 whatever pixels the little preview icon does a good job of being the exact size that it's going to be on your canvas but even that I guess I just don't pay enough attention to it that I still have to kind of tweak it a little bit you'll see me kind of mess with those knobs a little bit right so it, it is what it is and all of this is going to be learning curve stuff uh, especially if you're like me and fairly new to the mobile side of things but everything was clearly labeled i like the fact that there is kind of the mixer brush setting or wet brush setting right next to the regular brush up on that top menu and then you have a smudge tool so you'll notice i maybe use a smudge tool once but primarily I did my main block in with the basic full opacity brush um, which still blended really well by the way I want to mention that too like the blendability of all of the brush types was great um, I, I really enjoyed it because it all acted different and whenever they started acting differently it made me solve problems in a different way which I appreciate but th doing the basic uh, opacity you know basic brush and then whenever I kind of got my colors sort of where I wanted them and sort of the temperatures and the values, then I went into that kind of mixer wet brush mode and just started playing around. And that was a lot of fun because it really did kind of pull that paint and pull that pigment and keep my edges soft. And I, I'm appreciating that more and more lately is it's not soft as in like airbrush, but it's soft as in you still have enough room that you can go in and be like pinpoint accurate almost like a little razor blade and like come in and cut into these shapes to really make that contrast pop out and i've started to work more and more that way to where i stay relatively loose and, and kind of soft edges and then i'll go in on the ones that seem to make more sense and modify those edges to be a little sharper just to draw the eye where i want it to be and yeah, have it, having the basic brush and the wet brush right next to each other um, for the brush modes, it was super easy to do that. Just hop between both. Um, I'm trying to think of anything that I really didn't like. Not really. I mean, you saw I only used like two categories of brushes. A lot of times I get that weird uh, analysis paralysis of having so many options i don't know what to do so i don't do any of them and i've decided the best way to get over that is just you know stay in one category and mess with all the brushes in that one category or mess with a lot of the brushes in one and then maybe dabble in another category that's fairly similar like i go from oils to like digital paint then back to pigment then to so i'm dabbling in these little things just to see how they interact with each other but Overall, I mean, no complaints. I I really enjoyed this little, you know, 55 minute uh, still life study. And yeah, I can see myself using Art Studio a lot. I really do. Uh, feels good. I mean, I, I know this is not a super eventful review because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, works great. Um, and you know, spoiler alert, I'm gonna think Infinite Painter works pretty great as well. Uh, but yeah, like I said, these aren't really necessarily reviews. It's more of an overview of how it felt using these programs by not primarily being a mobile art guy. But yeah, really liked it. Really liked kind of adding the more saturated reds near the highlight of the apple, um, of the full apple. And then going in and adding some weird like off green and yellow into the inside of the apple that's kind of cut in half thought that was really cool and another thing one of my favorite parts of doing this one for art studio was really going back in and adding those darks the darks in the ambient occluded like where the lights not hitting anything really 
and getting the darks on the underside of the apple and kind of those cast shadows right there. I think once we added that, it really kind of brought everything else out and it got me excited. So then I went back into the pigment brushes and the more speckly oil brushes and went and made it look a little more painterly because I was like, oh yeah, you know, that's the ticket. We're going to darken up these values a little bit and then uh, kind of make it a little bit more dreamy as far as the background, kind of that soft focus sort of stuff. So yeah, it, you know, I was able to do the thing I wanted to, which is kind of just paint and not worry about the UI and not worry about it getting in the way. And uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, so with that being said, uh, let's move over to Infinite Painter from scratch, making this exact same painting and seeing um, at the end um, how we can kind of compare and contrast them. And here we are in Infinite Painter. Uh, this one took, let's see, the video says it was one hour, one minute, and like 30 seconds or so. So six to seven minutes, um, I, I guess longer to get to a somewhat finished state on this one. So yeah, these weren't like 30 or 40 hour masterpieces or like going for photorealism. This was just, you know, quick comparison stuff. And I don't know what it is. I mean, to be completely fair and completely open, this is two days after I did the Art Studio Pro painting of the same apples and, you know, having all the, uh, you know, the reference up on my monitors and like looking at it and stuff. So uh, two days went by. I did that on purpose because I didn't want to literally just do kind of a stroke for stroke remake of something. Um, I'm a big believer that, you know, different programs will let you solve problems differently depending on kind of how you're vibing with it. And to be totally fair, the Infinite Painter took a little longer to start finding a groove with. And I think part of that was I couldn't quite find a, a great, um, well, actually, a lot of the brushes are great, but I couldn't find the right brush that was giving me the, I don't know, the results that I wanted. I felt like I was doing pretty well on putting like the warm underpainting and then once I started adding the color on top of a new layer, you know, to have the paint sort of like blend in and do that type of stuff, um, I, I wasn't digging it for a while. So you'll see that, you know, I have a favorites list and I love my favorites list, but I wanted to try other brushes as well just to show you know in this video the myriad of brushes you can get and there's really nice um brushes under the paint category which have like thin oils and thick oils and like gouache and acrylics and they're all kind of blended in there i will say the categories are a little more um i don't know they're a little more confined in infinite painter as compared to art studio just from kind of going through the list because like all of the paint brushes are under the paint thing so you know with art studio we had the pigment we had um oh, let me open it up uh <laughs> i should probably have both of them open anyway but um just different category names i feel like uh yeah let me one of the brushes here yeah so there's like painting and then digital painting and then oil paint then you have your mixers and your smudging brushes like they were very i knew exactly what i was going to get in regards to what the look and the feel were going to be and how they were going to be different but in infinite painter everything's just kind of under the painting category so there was a little give and take on like going from the rollers to the uh you know to the gouache and then the glazing acrylic and it's cool that it's all in one category it's just all of those handle so drastically different that it it, it would be kind of nice to make it um you know maybe different categorizations or something like that but that's just a nitpick for me 
Um, you may like the fact that they're just all in the painting category. Like, that's great. Um, they, it is easy to find. I'll tell you that. Um, let's see. I do, one thing I do love about Infinite Painter is how unobtrusive the AI is, or the UI is. Um, now, I will say I can probably set up Art Studio to be kind of the same way. I bet there's like a minimalist mode. A lot of these programs like Procreate and, um, you know, even Art Rage and Clip Studio and stuff on mobile, they have sort of like a get the UI out of the way uh, button or like setting in the view category or something. And I could probably do that in Art Studio. I just, you know, I wanted to start painting. So I didn't really mess with the UI all that much. That might be something I go in and, and do. Um, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to show off, uh, the UIs as they were. So I may have activated that button on infinite painter while I painted on it last time I did a video, which was like, I want to say December of 2021. I put out an infinite painter video on the channel, but that could have been something I set up there. I just literally opened it up, made a 1920 by 1080 canvas and just started painting on <laughs> this time. So everything is kind of where I left it, including the favorites. But yeah, with my favorites, you know, I've just put decent pencils, uh, like some rollers, like the clay roller. I will say probably my favorite brush in Infinite Painter is the clay roller brush. Uh, you'll see me go back to it time and time again whenever I can't quite figure out what brush feels right for me. Uh, clay roller is this nice kind of wet, smudgy, opaque brush that blends really well without having to go into other settings too much. Um, really cool. Just out of the box, it works really great, especially with the Apple Pencil. Um, the It's funny... Uh, and you know we'll do a compare more comparison stuff in a bit but i will say normally i was like oh my favorite pencil on the ipad is the proco pencil here in infinite painter and you know i used it a little bit my, mainly i use the hb pencil because it's a little thicker um but i might like the art studio pencil a little more that pencil's just dope man like i got so excited using that pencil so which is weird because I don't I'm not normally a pencil guy like I'm a I'm a paintbrush guy so that's just something that jumped out at me um was the sketch part like yeah it, it felt fine in infinite painter uh, it's just it sounds goofy but it seemed a little more sketchy and a little more dynamic in art studio but once again that could just be you know it's a different day I've slept a few times since we did that first painting Tonight just may not have been my night. Um, that's a completely fair thing. I know some days I'll be firing on all cylinders and then, you know, I take a nap or I eat a meal or something and then I come back and then I just can't paint anymore. Like, <laughs> I just, whatever, um, you know, whatever momentum I had, it just pumps the brakes. And that could have been what happened tonight. Tonight may just not have been a strong night for me. But it just felt like I couldn't quite get into the flow until probably 35, 40 minutes in. And, you know, that's not, that's not great. Um, but once, once again, that's probably on me more so than the program. Um, but everything's where I wanted it. Um, I did use the smudge tools a little bit. Uh, I will say another kind of just one-to-one -one comparison in Art Studio, I enjoy the fact that there's a standard brush, a wet brush, then a smudge brush. And then even within those categories, there's like, you know, palette knives or oil paints or smudging tools within, and even like mixing brushes within each category. That, it gives me a little more versatility, I feel. Just, you know, the smudge brush, it works well in Infinite Painter, but you kind of have to find the brush that works the best. I know that sounds really obvious, but you kind of have to toy with it. You have to toy with it a little bit more. And it's not going to, it may not respond exactly the same way. I know I used one of the wet stucco brushes as a blender, and it worked pretty well. But then it started going a little haywire on me. I had to like, turn the size down quite a bit 
which I didn't want to do. I wanted it to sort of grab everything and merge it together and have these cool like paint splatter effect type things. But it just felt a little unwieldy uh, on that regard. So, um, let's see more stuff I did like. Like I really do love the clay roller, the wet stucco roller, any of the paint rollers in Infinite Painter are just awesome. Like I love the texture that they give because it does look like stucco. It looks like you have this crazy canvas and you're just kind of like rolling some stuff through it and it leaves really cool texture. It feels random, but in the good way, like in the, in the nice surprising way. And whenever you start mixing that with your smoother uh, brushes, kind of like your filbert or your glazed acrylic or something like that, you can get some really neat effects. And, you know, maybe also apples are not the most exciting thing to paint. And I understand that. <laughs> so probably when you guys heard at the beginning, like, we're going to paint apples, you're going to be like, oh, man. Um, but, you know, they have good problems to solve. You have to have good edge control. You have to have decent um, value control for, like, the form of the apple to make it actually seem fairly three-dimensional. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I wasn't quite in my flow today or what have you, but... This one feel it feels a little more, I don't know, cartoony. I don't know if that's quite the right word, but I think what it is is I oversaturated the reds. I think I, I painted a little too over the warm underpainting. So it got a little away from me. And I think I do think the blue, you know how we've kind of mixed the blue into the background, had those cooler tones to go over those warmer tones. I feel like the the cool didn't quite blend the same way as it did in art studio and once again that could just be me not having the right tool for the job and me picking the wrong set of brushes or uh, maybe it would have worked better if i would have stayed on the underpainting layer and then painted like painted everything on one layer that way all of these cooler colors or neutral colors could blend in with these warm tones um, that is something to think about. So maybe each layer in Infinite Painter works more opaquely than they do in Art Studio. Um, or may I, hell, I need to check the uh, footage again. Maybe what happened is I did paint everything on one layer. Maybe <laughs> on Art Studio. I don't know. I need to go back and look, but I don't think I did. I think I did it the same way. I, I want to say I did the same process and did the same type of layers. You do your sketch layer with multiply. That way you can block in your tones underneath that and then kind of sandwiched in between those that's where you start putting in your local color and you start you know making it happen but um overall i do feel like we we got there um i feel like we got to a decent still life study especially for an hour time limit like an hour is not a lot of time uh that's what i would consider speed painting you know like none of these oh I painted in 10 minutes like no I can't really I can barely turn on my iPad in 10 minutes you know what I mean um an hour is a decent you know it's a decent chunk of time but you have to have enough time to kind of get yourself going and get the momentum in your favor and start solving problems so I will say something that I really did like doing here in Infinite Painter was doing the sharper outlines like going in near the end and really making sure that we had a sharp outline and silhouette of the apples. I should have done a little more, I think, on the uh, the actual like uh, blanket or or towel or wh whatever is there at the bottom um, where the apples are sitting on, whatever that surface is. I should have probably gone and rendered that a little better, but I, I think it was one of those that I could feel myself taking so long that I was like, I just gotta, you know, I gotta worry about the the money part, which is actually the apples. Um, but it, it still has some cool, loose brushwork. It still has uh, decent tone shifts and temperature shifts. So yeah, I mean, overall, like I said, it's effective. It, it did take me a little longer to get going, but I am pleased with the result. Um, of course, I could always work this for another two and a half hours and make it actually really pop. But if this was just a one hour versus one hour, get in there, figure things out, uh, still life study, I think it was effective. So um, yeah, what we'll do is I will just do 
a, a quick uh, roundup while we look at some comparison shots. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, quick wrap up and final thoughts. Both of these are great. Um, I ha I've had more experience with Infinite Painter kind of on my phone and um, whenever I recorded the video in 2021, um, that was really the only digital painting program I had on my iPad. So I kind of got used to how it worked. But now that I've started to branch out a little more, I've been using Procreate more. I've been using, um, I mean, this was the first real time I used Art Studio. Um, I can I can start seeing what the strengths and weaknesses are going to be of something like Infinite Painter, um, really of all of them. So I will say I can get a better kind of, I guess, dreamy quality, like a little more, not airbrushed, because I don't, I don't like the look of airbrushing, but um, it's sort of, uh, yeah, kind of more dreamy and like smoother look in Infinite Painter. I think it does that a little more effective than Art Studio does. Um, I will say Art Studio, I just really, really, really like how, number one, that the sketch brush, that sketch pencil, just called Art Pencil, is a freaking game changer. That, that thing's awesome. Um, but then also the categorization and the way the brushes are set up. Like I love the categories. I love the opaque and then wet brush and then smudge tool being three separate things. And then you throw that pigment mode on top of there. Yeah, that gives a lot of versatility and flexibility. And it really does kind of mimic, let's say if I were working in acrylic with, you know, medium or, uh, oils with like solvent or something like it gives me that vibe of being able to control the intensity of the effect and I can do the same thing and here's the thing you can do basically these exact same paintings verbatim in each program so like there's just going to be the subtle differences on what the strengths are and I'm going to say the brush engine and the categorization is definitely going to be uh, art studios main thing right um and then infinite painter i feel like uh it's, it's sleek like you can actually see i did the undo stuff a few times on there and uh it worked it worked really well you know um yeah i i just really uh, appreciate how concise that program is and it runs super fast and super clean it's a breeze to use in art studio i bet i could set it up that way too but just out of the box i think infinite painter has the has the feel factor down of like um going in the painting program and just getting started um i don't have to parse as much information if that makes sense like once you know what the icons mean you're kind of off to the races so you can't really go wrong now i will say and someone can please correct me if I'm wrong because I bought these a long time ago and I did pay for the full versions of these. I checked the Apple store um, and, you know, basically you can download both of these for free. So really all that you're going to be out is time. However, they have the in-app purchases to like, quote unquote, unlock the software. From what I've seen and what I see is Arts, uh, Art Studio Pro is going to be for a one year license is $9.99 to unlock all the features or you can do a lifetime license for 40 bucks now on the flip side infinite painter you unlock everything for $9.99 in perpetuity like there's no yearly fee like just one ten dollar charge is just like procreate you buy it for 10 bucks and it's yours so that's something to consider that, yeah, Art Studio might be more comprehensive in the way the brushes work and the engine and maybe the feel with Apple Pencil and whatnot. But it's also, if you want to unlock it and own it, it's four times more expensive than Infinite Painter to unlock all these things. So it's something to think about. And if you're really tight on the budget, uh, I would say probably go with Infinite Painter. Um, just because, you know, $10 and you get everything you need right there. Uh, now, I will say, I believe you can import brushes on both of these. 
but I have not tried that. That's not something I've dug into yet because I want to try out their native brushes first and figure out what I really like about the native brush engines for each program. And then I might bring in my brushes and customize them. Or, you know what I mean? But I wanted to see what they brought to the table first. And I'm happy to say that both of them give you stunning paintings. Like the results are great on both. Uh, they are just different. Um, I will say that I will probably... Oh man, I'm probably going to use Art Studio more now that I've kind of gotten in there and figured a few things out. Like, it is a deeper experience, I feel, but it's four times more expensive. So that's the give and take. If you want the be-all, end-all thing, um, I mean, Art Studio seems to be the one, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, Infinite Painter ain't no slouch, man. And the other great thing about this, I think both of these are also available on Samsung devices. So if you have, because I have a Galaxy S10 Plus, which is now like an ancient phone, but it has the stylus built in, you know? Uh, and that's how I've used Infinite Painter before, before I got my iPad, is I use it on it and it works great. Same setup, same brushes, same, you know, smudge tools and palette knives and clay roller and all that stuff it's all there and works great so i will say that's a huge benefit especially when we talk about the elephant in the room of procreate having both of these available on samsung devices is fantastic it's great like you know procreate needs to figure something out in my opinion but that's a whole other video but yeah if we were to look at these two side by side in a clash of the titans uh, between Art Studio Pro and Infinite Painter, I'm going to give the edge to Art Studio just with that caveat of if you want to unlock everything, full export, you know, uh, there's a, quite actually quite a few feet, like saving. You got to pay to save stuff. So, uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. Um, but it's, it is just kind of a, a meteor uh, program. Like the, the programs are more comprehensive. So hopefully that sheds some light on this. Hopefully you find something that you like. Let me know in the comments which painting you like better. And trust me, um, I, I think I like the Art Studio one better, but I don't think that's necessarily because of the program. I think that might also be because of uh, my, <laughs> my, my, my weird uh, not being in the groove for the Infinite Painter session. So don't think that that's because of the software, because it's not. Uh, I mean, artists are going to have good and bad days. Um, and you caught me at a sort of not great painting session, but you can still see that very respectable results. Like results I'm, I am pleased with, especially for only an hour. But yeah, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what your experiences are with these mobile apps. And what are some other apps you would like me to put head to head? Is there specific features you would like to see or compare or contrast? Uh, do you want me to put like Art Studio versus Procreate? Do you want me to do that tournament of champions type thing? Uh, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. But until next time, until we see each other again, go out there, make cool art, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.